Today, in the village of Solo Solo, at the house of the chief Leota, a welcome visitor of high rank, the orator Mamea, is speaking to the Council of Chiefs. When Mamea has talked with the heads of families, according to custom, they invite him to accompany them to the Malai and to speak to all the people of the village so that everyone, young and old, may hear his message and learn the full meaning of a new word in the language of Samoa, the word Pelepasite, the plebiscite. A plebiscite, says Mamea, is a ballot in which all grown-up citizens of a country express their opinions on a question of national importance by voting in secret. Tomorrow, for the first time in the history of Samoa, the votes of the people will decide an issue which affects the life of every man, woman and child in the country. Independence for Western Samoa and the ending of United Nations trusteeship. For centuries, the chiefs and orators have strengthened and sustained the pattern of Samoan life. Under the United Nations trusteeship system, as explained by the United Nations plebiscite commissioner, Dr. Rifai, every adult citizen has an equal right and an equal responsibility in deciding the political future of the territory. He tells of the plebiscite arrangements which are being made by New Zealand as the trustee power. From the traditional centre of Samoan government at Mulinu, returning officers with ballot boxes are beginning their journeys to polling stations throughout the territory. Every half hour on the day before the plebiscite, the New Zealand plebiscite administrator, Mr C.G.R. Mackay, checks out another busload of staff and supplies bound for one of the 150 polling stations in town and country. From Apia, the capital, the Western Samoan Broadcasting Service gives advice and information on the plebiscite to the people. You, who will be voting on the 9th of May, should fully understand what you are voting for. Read the Constitution of Western Samoa. Copies may be obtained at the post office, library, prime minister's office, and from the administration offices at Mulinu'u and Tuasivi. Plebiscite day, and polling begins at the central office of the government of Western Samoa in Apia. A few miles away at the village of Lepea, the Prime Minister and his wife leave their home on the way to the polling station. In a foreword to a government booklet explaining the plebiscite, the 37-year-old Prime Minister, the Honourable Fiame Mata'afa, CBE, asked the people of Western Samoa to vote with a clean heart and mind and to make a momentous decision in the history of Western Samoa. There are two questions on the voting paper. One, do you agree with the constitution adopted by the Constitutional Convention on the 28th of October 1960? And two, do you agree that on the 1st of January 1962, Western Samoa should become an independent state on the basis of that constitution? For the first time in Samoa, women as well as men are voting on a national issue affecting the political future of their country. The United Nations Plebiscite Commissioner observes the voting at many polling stations east and west of Apia on Plebiscite Day.
Voting is orderly and good-humoured, a tribute to the excellent guidance of the Samoan and New Zealand plebiscite administrators who travel many miles on polling day to observe and assist the staffs of polling stations in various parts of the country. During the day, 57 polling stations are visited by the New Zealand plebiscite administrator, Mr. C.G. Mackay, who speaks and understands the Samoan language. And in a village near our pier, at the close of a memorable day, representatives of Samoa, the United Nations and New Zealand shake hands on a most successful combined operation. The votes are counted and registers bearing the names of 38,000 voters are checked and rechecked. The final count, climax to months of patient work by Mr. Mackay and his Samoan and New Zealand colleagues, shows that a six to one majority voted in favour of independence. The result is reported to the Council of State, two of the highest chiefs in Samoa, and the New Zealand High Commissioner, Mr. J.B. Wright. When independence is attained, the Honourable Thomas Sessi and the Honourable Male Tor will become joint heads of state and the High Commissioner will withdraw from the Council. Now on Samoa's National Day, members of the Legislative Assembly and youth organisations meet on the historic Malai at Mulinu. In a simple but impressive ceremony, the flags of Samoa and New Zealand are raised side by side, symbolising the close partnership of the two nations. Today, a new chapter in the history of the South Pacific has begun. The leaders of the Samoan people, New Zealand and the United Nations have worked in harmony to help Samoa along the road to independence in the modern world. With abundant goodwill from her Pacific neighbours and faith in her own unique heritage, Western Samoa can look forward with confidence to a new life as an independent nation under the stars of the Southern Cross.